What's good? New YouTube video. How long do you think Chris McLean would go to prison for if he actually got arrested for all the bullshit that my man was doing in uh, Total Drama Island? Real shit, though. Who is familiar with this show? Because if you're not, you way too young. You way too young. But honestly, though, they had like five different seasons. So realistically, like, come on now. Like, realistically, you should be somewhat f like familiar with this show. Pretty safe to say that Chris McClain is one of the most absurdly demented figures in children's cartoons. Oh, for a fact. He is a package of vicious sadism, excessive vanity, and negligent irresponsibility. The amount of pain that he has inflicted may seem For a fact, for a fact. But that's what I'm going to try and disprove today. Keyword, try. Today I'm going to take a look at a list of his crimes committed throughout all the seasons of Total Drama and hopefully find a decent estimate on how long he would be charged for them, because his rampage of terror is through. Or, at least that's what I would say if there wasn't a new season of the show coming. Whole new one coming back too, like an extra two seasons, and I am going to check that out, I'm not going to cap. Yeah. There are a few rules and clarifications I want to make though. I want to limit this to things Chris McClain has done that are more or less cut and dry instances of a crime. There are a lot of things he's done over the years that are pretty much inexcusable, but aren't easy to fit into discrete violations of written law. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to just choose the best examples I can really find of any crime I'm charging him of. And I'm copy, only copy. with each crime once. He being Otherwise, fair, it's all good. Spend hours here arguing whether he's committing battery or assault or attempted murder in each instance of the show where he pushes or shoves another character. To balance that out, I'm giving him the maximum sentence for each charge. So expect a lot of life sentences. And just to make things clear, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an expert in this field. I'm not a fucking I lawyer. I consult a criminal lawyer on some topics I had questions about for this video, but I'm not claiming to be an end-all be-all authority on this topic. Real shit, this real is spill. a fun estimate I'm making as a thought experiment. Let's keep that in mind, folks. Starting First off, degree with murder. a very easy one. In fact, I think among fans of the show, this is the most Ooh, obvious instance of Chris McClain engaging in criminal behavior. In episode two of Total Drama World Tour, Chris commands Chef to release a bunch of flesh-eating scarab beetles they had gathered on the cast. And although all the players managed to escape, the intern he was forcing to be a footrest is literally eaten alive to the bone off camera. Oh shit. Wow. Damn, that's kind of dark. Wow, this show is dark. Chris like, for real, that's kind of dark. To help like damn bro, imagine, imagine, that is fucked up. Okay, okay, definitely murder, definitely murder, he killed somebody. The poor guy. This shows a premeditated plan to enact deadly force on a group of people, and one of those people unfortunately passed away in the process. Because of that, I'm going to consider this first degree murder. You could argue that this could be pleaded down, but the fact that he and Chef willingly collected a deadly force ahead of time that they unleash on a group of people makes it hard to justify this as manslaughter or second degree murder. Chef would probably be prosecuted too, because he is the one who took the action on Chris's command. The max sentence for both of them is life imprisonment. There's a lot of instances in the show that can be pointed to as attempted murder. I mean, you're not going to get away with pushing people off cliffs or detonating explosives on boats in the real world. But I think the simplest example is what he did to Ezekiel in season three, episode 13. But it's in just what called episode, attempted murder. Episode, Ezekiel sneaks back onto the plane and gets captured by the cast. When Chris is done with him, he commands Chef to throw him off without a parachute. And given that that's most likely a drop of eight or more kilometers, yeah, that's pretty dead. There's even a fade to white to show that time passes, which lends credence to the idea that Chris clearly had time to think about what he was doing and the potential consequences. Because of that, I'm counting- I'm not gonna lie though, that nigga Ezekiel, he really doesn't get, uh, uh, um, the word, enough credit for how many times that he was able to survive all that bullshit that Chris was throwing at him. Nigga tried to throw him out the plane, then that nigga survived. He basically was living un underneath the plane for like God knows how long. This nigga basically went feral. He basically turned into a fucking like animal person, like son, bro. He basically became like the king of like some uh fuck, I forgot what do you call it? Like you know, some like you know, he be he basically became the king of like feral wild animals and, and stuff like that. I'm not going to lie. Hella resilient had time Big to words. think about what he was doing and the potential consequences. About to say, why she look at because of that, I'm counting this as an attempted murder, and the max sentence for that is a Oh, definitely. Sentence. He also does this again, like, two episodes later to the intern that mixed up Italy and Greece. You might initially think this is about the contestants of Total Drama themselves, but that's not what I'm referring to here. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Why? Why are we to running to the front? Why? Of course, with lions, rattlesnakes, and bears, while also carrying babies. 
How he got the babies is a really concerning question. Literally in kidnapped them. That he somehow has legal guardianship of these poor children. He still isn't allowed to put them in the care of teenagers in the presence of deadly animals. Very true. I mean, it's so bad that he even child endangerment, right? Child endangerment, episode. child abandonment. For exposing children under the age of ten to a life-threatening situation, Chris gets a maximum of five years. Damn. But that's only because I'm counting each crime only one time. If I counted every single baby in this video, he would get forty years because there were eight babies. Yikes. <laughs> There are a couple of notable kidnapping. Of this. Okay. The first one that I think is worth discussing is the Tanzania episode of World Tour. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that Chris McLean probably does not have the legal authority to forcibly capture Ezekiel and keep him in a cage or a box, True. especially because Ezekiel wasn't even technically part of the show's cast at the time and just snuck on the plane. Therefore, I think Chris deserves a kidnapping charge. Another good example of kidnapping is what Chris did to Alejandro at the end of the same season. After being burnt to a crisp by lava in the finale, Alejandro was forced into a robot suit for some reason. Apparently it was to heal or something, but that doesn't really make any sense. And there didn't seem to be any doctor on the scene that prescribed being caged in a robot suit where you don't seem to be able to eat or drink or expel waste for over a year as treatment for severe burns. Yeah, this show is weird. The details of this whole fiasco are kind of swept under the rug in the show, mostly because it raises a lot of confusions and the whole thing was really just meant to be a Star Wars reference, but you have to realize that Alejandro was kept in the suit against his will for over a year away from his friends and family, and I mean, he didn't he seem to have any say in that. There's not gonna lie though, he came out healed though, did he not? Look at him, you saw that smile, it glistened. He, st he came out healed, he was burned alive by lava. He came out healed though. Also the weird implication in the All-Stars premiere that he might have been comatose the entire time, but there are a lot of conflicting details about that. All-Stars was never really known for its internal consistency. But yeah, Chris is getting a life sentence for these offenses. Life sentences? I don't know how Chris gets away with installing cameras in bathrooms. In Total Drama Island, the cat that is actually against the law though. you can't install cameras in public bathrooms. And you also can't record in public bathrooms. I never knew that. I never knew that was actually against the law. You can't record in a public bathroom. Chris is lucky enough to be provided bathrooms that don't have built-in surveillance technology, but the World Tour cast is not so fortunate, as it's implied that the confessional is the only bathroom they have access to in the first episode of the season. He's essentially forcing them to be videotaped while using the bathroom, as there's no other reasonable way to answer nature's calls on the premises. Not gonna lie, was Chris a weirdo? Was Chris low-key a weirdo? Without, you know breaking several implicit social contracts. And yeah, that's nasty, Chris. What the heck is wrong with you? That's not even to mention the time where he intentionally broke the bathroom lock in one of the episodes. The max sentence for voyeurism is five years, along with a mandatory inclusion in the Canadian National Sex Offender Registry. Damn, so Chris would have gotten like classified as a sex offender, about. that is wild. So, uh, even though the age of consent in Canada is 16, the age limit of what is considered uh, cheese pizza in Canada is still 18, meaning that although in most cases the total drama cast are seen as adults in the court of law, when it comes to Chris taping them in the bathroom without their consent and presumably using that footage on television and distributing it among the show's producers, um, yeah, it's dangerously cheesy pizza. For the oh, making and distribution of that pizza, child porn. Chris will get 28 years in total, along with being registered as a sex offender. Now, I just want to forget this ever happened, because searching up legal information about what truly classifies as cheese pizza in law made me feel like a sicko, and I'm probably on a couple of watch lists now. So, let's just move on. Throughout the show Total Drama, we see Chris keeping tons of animals in captivity, and even in the best case scenario, he's probably breaking laws. Even if he somehow has all the licenses and permits necessary to hold sharks, bears, koalas, and sasquatches captive, he still admits to abusing them regularly. In the Australia episode of World Tour, he claims to not have fed two baby koalas for weeks. How he even got the baby koalas is beyond me. We should probably talk about that next. The fact that he keeps a whole bunch of creatures- Human trafficking, animal, animal trafficking, that's crazy. really sketchy. Like, zoos stopped doing that over half a century ago. He's not taking them anywhere in particular, and most of the God time he's be hanging around Sexual in the harassment? cockpit. Like, so, yo. I'm going to give him the absurdly generous maximum sentence of a $5,000 fine and six months in prison. Yeah, I'm really lowballing this one. Though, in his defense, Chris does treat some of his animals well. For example, his man-eating sharks are allowed to unionize and take breaks throughout their workday. A lot of the animals that Chris has held over the years seem impossible to actually own legally. 
and I think the best example is the baby koalas. Koalas are a very beloved and very protected animal in Australia. Koalas have chlamydia. Australia. And they are entirely the more you know. possess unless it's an authorized zoo, a trained caretaker, or maybe a scientist. Chris McLean is not one of these three, and God only knows how he was able to get two baby koalas in his possession to torture. So, yeah. According to Australian law, the maximum sentence for wildlife trade offenses is 10 years imprisonment and a fine of $210,000. Chris McLean seems to be a bit of a pyromaniac. There have been several instances throughout the show where he threatens people with explosives, to the point where it can be considered attempted murder. In reality, the use of explosives, even on one's own property, is heavily restricted and you aren't allowed to blow stuff up willy-nilly without special certification and reasoning. And if that's not good enough for you, there's a pretty good case to be made that the volcano incident in Season 3 is arson as well. I mean, he knew ahead of time that pineapples would cause the volcano to burst, and that action led to a calamity that destroyed the entire island, threatened the lives of dozens, and burned Alejandro alive. So, yeah. The max sentence for most forms of arson without explicit deaths is 14 years. Damn. Given that total so basically, he's never seen the light of day. ...puts the production of the series in-universe under the regulation of Federal Canadian Labor Code. And, like, you and I both know that neither Chris McLean nor the producers are giving these poor laborers proper breaks and lunch periods. I mean, his interns were literally starved at one point. Like, I don't even think you're allowed to make unpaid interns do the level of physically taxing work that Chris makes them do. Never mind how many of them have died. The culpability of who is actually responsible for this might be a bit shaky. Mostly because Chris's position in the whole total drama media apparatus has always been nebulous. But I've always kind of personally headcanon that To be transparent, this is almost certainly a generalization of, of labor restrictions and their consequences in Canada. Blah, 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 blah. The show was vastly expanded in season four and beyond. So I'm just gonna fine him and the producers $250,000 each for simplicity. Oh, what's that I hear? Sounds like it's time for the civil court intermission. So I'm going to go off road from criminal law a little bit because this wouldn't really be resolved as a criminal case, but I think a significant portion of Chris McLean's wrongdoings fall under this umbrella, so it's worth acknowledging. I'm not including this in the final criminal sentence, but I know if I don't bring this up, a lot of people in the comments are going to ask about it. There have been a lot of times in the show where interns have been seriously injured or straight up died. I think the most well-known example of this phenomenon is in the season finale of Total Drama Island, where Chris literally tells a new intern that he was being recruited as a tester in the final episode because all the interns were dead. The silent intern tests out the balance beam over man-eating shark-infested waters and sadly loses his balance and falls, and presumably dies being eaten alive by the sharks. This is just one of many incidents where unpaid laborers in the show seem to die. Even more extreme is the scene in Revenge of the Island where Chris sends a bunch of laborers to Boney Island and they all get eaten by monsters. And although I'm sure everyone in the Total Drama universe who's dumb enough to work on the show sign a lot of their rights away to predatory contracts, there is pretty much no circumstance in which the family of these unfortunate interns would not be able to sue the pants off the producers and wrong Definitely. lawsuits for this. Like, even if the contract literally said that legal action couldn't be taken, legal action could probably be taken. And to prove that, I have to kind of condense a complex topic about contractual law into just a couple of paragraphs, so bear with me. The contracts that the cast and crew of Total Drama sign are almost certainly what are called contracts of adhesion which are basically contracts in which one of the parties has basically no bargaining power in the specific minutiae of the agreement. The reason I say this is because there are a lot of individual moments throughout the show where Chris tells characters they have to do something they don't want to because of contractual obligations. And the contracts are very big, meaning I doubt that anyone except for Courtney actually read them. In a court of law, an adhesion contract can be deemed unconscionable, which in a nutshell means that it's declared too unfair or predatory to be strictly enforced in court, which, with a guy like McLean and producers like the Total Drama producers, I can see it happening. So yeah, although I doubt Chris McLean could be criminally charged for the death of the balance beam intern, I think his family could easily sue the producers for millions. Definitely. Like Definitely for a nice little civil court suit. Millions, civil so I'm not suit. Lie. The complete lack of safety procedures in the Total Drama workplace really sets that in. This also Nah, they really ain't give a fuck about none of their workers for real. Boney Island in Revenge of the Island, in pretty much every other instance of an intern dying, which usually happens off screen. Though, I should say, I'm not a legal expert, I'm just a guy talking about a cartoon on the internet. And there's a lot to this topic beyond just my simple rundown. While we're at it, I think it's also worth talking about characters in total drama that likely could sue Chris and the producers for personal injury. Once again, there's a level of gray area because they likely signed some predatory ass contracts that waved a lot of rights away, 
but like no matter what Dakota and her father sign when applying for the show, I think the courts would likely side in favor of the 16 year old girl who was sent into an extremely dangerous radioactive mine as an unpaid laborer. Especially because she endured life altering physical damage and based on how her speech patterns change, a measurable drop in her IQ. <laughs> I can't help but now imagine someone in the court administering an IQ test to Dakotazoid in order to prove a permanent loss in cognitive function as a result of radiation poisoning. My but, golly! Uh oh! Sounds like that's it for the civil court intermission for today. Thanks for joining us. There's a lot of examples of things like this happening throughout the show, especially with the amount of havoc caused while traveling the globe and world tour. I mean, does anyone else remember the amount of artwork destroyed at the Louvre? The simplest example that I can think of is when it's shown in episode 6 of World Tour that Chris sent out a gigantic robot dubbed the Total Drama Machine to search for an AWOL Duncan, and we see a clip where the machine terrorizes a neighborhood and completely destroys the roof of a house. I think we can reasonably assume the damages there are over $5,000, and because of that I'm giving him the maximum sentence for mischief to property of 10 years. Assault and battery aren't really defined as different things in the Canadian Criminal Code, so I'm just going to lump it all together. And frankly, Chris basically assaults the contestants all the time, and they kind of assault each other. It isn't assault you like, really you know, you doing it with, with your hand specifically and, and battery is with an object? Consent, which he does plenty of times in and out of the game. The max sentence for assault causing bodily harm is 10 years. Damn. In Total Drama World Tour, Chris siphons the budget for the season along with its emergency backup by the 10th episode on personal amenities, like a hot tub for his pimped out airplane lounge. This is absolutely a misallocation of funds, and you can even argue he should be held responsible for the fact that the plane had to run an emergency landing that literally flagged Owen and Izzy. Fraud over $5,000, which I'm sure is what this entails, comes with a maximum sentence of 14 years. Now, I could go on a whole tangent about how Canadian law manages the disposal of nuclear waste and talk about what Chris and the nuclear waste company he worked with would be deemed responsible for in court. But fortunately, I don't have to, because at the end of Total Drama Revenge of the Island, Chris McLean gets arrested by the RCMP and goes to jail for a year. So lucky me. And lucky Chris too, as he's already been tried for this, and that's a generous sentence for how much damage he did to the local wildlife. One year? For dumping radioactive there are waste, bro. There throughout the show where Chris McLean is hinted at not paying several of the laborers in the show, despite the fact that he seems to rely on a lot of unpaid interns, which in itself seems a bit sketchy. Chef Hatchet is claimed to have not been paid on time in the second episode of Total Drama Action. Chris tries to avoid the question. Interestingly enough, some of the employees seem to go on strike in the following episode. These kinds of disputes don't usually end up in court with prison time, they usually just end up in fees. But there was one case where an employer in Ontario who didn't pay employees went to prison for 90 days and was forced to pay $900,000 in fines. Also, because Chef is asking Chris directly, I love it when shit happens like that to reason, people. Chris is responsible for Chef's paycheck and not good, my boy? producers, so I'm charging him. So, all in all, Chris McLean has been a very, very bad man. Horrible a person. very, very bad man. But hey, we all love him, though. I really cover most of the things he does to the contestants in the context of challenges. Mostly because I wrote this video under the presumption that the dangerous things the contestants have done are done under some form of contractual consent. So really, most of the awful stuff he's done there would likely end up being handled in civil court. But even past that, Chris has a huge list of crimes. And if he were to be charged for all the ones I've outlined here, he would get... Drum roll, please. Three life sentences, 86 years and 9 months in prison, $1,155,000 in fines, and he has to enlist in the National Sex Offender Registry. But yeah, I forgot cool, about that part dude. too. I forgot about that. Oh, I completely forgot about that part. Australian prison and 200 So, my, okay, no, no, no. Before he starts add, um, adding that. Nigga said, three life sentences, so boom. Chris, you in jail right now, right? No, I mean you in court. All rise. All right, the final verdict for Christopher McLean. I sentence you to uh, three consecutive life sentences, 86 years and nine months in prison. You will have to pay a, a fine worth of over a uh, million and a uh, one hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars in fines, and he has to enlist in the. And you also need to enlist in the Canadian uh, National Sex Offender Registry. God damn. National Sex Offender Registry. Not cool, dudes. Oh, also add 10 years in an Australian prison and 210,000 Australian dollars. Jesus, another 10 years? Okay, okay, he already got life sentences, though, so it's not going to be possible, but... God damn, okay, this is the thing, though. 
when people begin life sentences or consecutive life sentences like four or five what does that like what does that mean isn't one life sentence enough i'm just saying isn't one life sentence enough because it's like nigga he's already going to be in there for life so what's the point of adding another two dollars oh and pretty much everything he's done to the contestants in the show despite the contracts they signed absolutely justifies a sum of tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars in damages every single episode is a wrongful death and personal injury lawsuit spectacular frankly i would join total drama just so i could get injured and sue the crap out of the show i'd make a lot more than a paltry million dollars i can tell you that much anyway thanks for watching thanks for watching and stuff like that you know what i'm saying Thank, and thank you for watching my video too. You feel me? Like, subscribe. Yeah, you know, you already know what to do. do. You know, do your job. Do your fucking job. All right.